I want to see if Cursor can help me not just write a script, but deploy one to the internet. Earlier this year, Cloudflare did announce Python support for Cloudflare, Cloudflare workers, which is one of my favorite ways to deploy isolated bits of script code. I want to see how far we can get. So. Let's get into it. So this is the cursor project that we built yesterday. I wrote none of this code. I know no Python. I'll post a card to the build video right up here. In cursor, let's hit command L to open our chat and see what we'd like to do next. So I'd like to deploy this script to the internet as a Cloudflare worker. Any questions? Now, I don't, I don't know. I personally like to ask the LLM if it has any questions for me because I know that sometimes I don't communicate as clearly as I would like to think. Certainly, I understand that you want to convert this Python script into a Cloudflare worker that can be deployed to the internet. I'll make the necessary changes to meet your acceptance criteria before I start. I have a couple questions. Now, this is actually a great opportunity for me to learn how to prompt better in the future. Um, are you familiar with JavaScript? Cloudflare workers use JavaScript or TypeScript, so we'll need to rewrite the script in JavaScript. Two, do you want to keep the YouTube transcript API functionality or use a different method to fetch the transcript? So my response is, uh, before I answer your questions, are you able to read documentation from the web when provided a URL? And then to cut down on the number of back and forth, I'll just say, if so, here is the documentation page for Python support in workers. All right, yes, I can read and interpret documentation from the web when provided with a URL. I've reviewed the documentation for Python support and Cloudflare workers that you've shared. Now I'll answer your questions based on that information. Regarding familiarity with JavaScript, while JavaScript knowledge is typically necessary for Cloudflare workers, the good news is that you can actually use Python for this task. Cha ching Cloudflare Workers now provides first-class support for Python, which is currently in beta. Concerning your YouTube transcript API, we'll need to find an alternative method to fetch the transcript as YouTube transcript API library isn't available in Cloudflare Workers environment. Given this information, let's proceed with converting your script to a Python-based Cloudflare Worker. Here's an outline of the changes we'll make. So changes. Now at this point, I'm not particularly married to the idea of using Python. So we're at a little bit of a fork. If I can't use that library inside of Cloudflare Worker, I'm totally okay with using JavaScript. So I may just have it rewrite the whole thing for me and see kind of what type of confusion ensues. But I'll ask it first if there's a suitable library in JavaScript. Can you tell me more about why the Python transcript library we're using is not available in Cloudflare Workers? I ask because I'm not opposed to rewriting in JavaScript TypeScript. I'm more familiar with those languages. So if a suitable alternative exists, I'd prefer TypeScript. Given your preference for TypeScript and familiarity with it, it would indeed be better to write the script in TypeScript. There are JavaScript TypeScript alternatives for fetching YouTube's transcripts, such as the YouTube Caption Scraper NPM package. Okay, so it did find a, an alternative library for us. Um, it's untested at this point. <laughs> at first I read this as interface TypeScript. <laughs> <laughs> which is just kind of funny to think about. Um, start number, duration number, uh, text string. Give the video ID from the uh, URL and uh, format the times. So I wonder if this transcript scraper doesn't naturally use SRT. I think actually GitHub has its own format for times, which would make sense. And yeah, it looks like it is manually writing the times as that SRT format where there's the like start time, end time, and that like double dash arrow in the middle. All right, this all looks good. I mean, assuming that this is correct, uh, I'm totally fine with the solution. Okay, to use this, we'll need to set up a project with Wrangler and TypeScript. Here are basic Wrangler Toml configuration. So let's start by making a new wrangler.toml. Once we have this file, we should be able to apply to it. Yes, continue, done, great. Love those little uh, touches. You also need to install the necessary dependencies and set up your package JSON with a build script. Here's the basics. So let's set up a new package.json and apply to it. Yes, continue, generating, done, great. This TypeScript version achieves the same functionality as the original Python script, but it's compatible with Cloudflare workers and uses a JavaScript library to fetch the YouTube transcripts. It meets your acceptance criteria. The video URL is received as a URL parameter. The output is plain text in the browser. CLI specific code has been removed. 
uh, remember to handle errors properly and consider adding rate limiting or caching mechanisms for production use. Okay, this I'll probably come back with questions about momentarily. Now I do need to add the code itself. This will presumably be in like an index.ts. So new file, index.ts. And let's see if it knows to apply it there. Yes, great, awesome. Okay, so let's save that. Did we save our JSON file? Wrangler Tamil, yes, perfect. Okay, I guess except probably saves it. Um, now, so far we've just been giving it the single file context. Let's apply all of the context and say, now that we've converted the project to TypeScript, I'd like to know which files can be safely removed or modified. And we'll ask with the entire code base here. Okay, so we've sent everything up. So we're going to remove the requirements.txt. It says lines one through seven, which I'm hoping is all of it. Yes, okay, so we'll delete that. Okay, so remove the Python uh, file altogether. So this one can go delete. And so we're gonna modify our, this looks like the readme. Um, let's see, so we don't need to do that. And we can remove our .env, delete. Okay, can we apply this one directly? No, it's not catching that. So we want this to be in git ignore. So let's copy that, update our git ignore. See the package in, JSON, index, and Wrangler Tamil files should be kept as they are essentially for the TypeScript version. Okay, summarization. You know, I kind of wish that it started with the summarization. I understand that that's not how these results generally get rendered, but it might be helpful to start with like an index of things that you're changing. So remove requirements and the Python script, modify the readme and the git ignore. Yes, okay, so let's go back up to the readme. Now there's, I see this ask thing and I'm not exactly sure what that means yet. I haven't seen it. So modify, okay, so I can, it looks like I can ask inline questions. So maybe there's like a thread or something. Um, let's cancel that for now. Okay, please update the readme to represent the TypeScript version of the package. Okay, great. Uh, this is a Cloudflare worker, converts YouTube videos to um, subtitles uh, to the SRT format. Um, install node, clone the repository, install dependencies, and then uh, npm install Wrangler, Wrangler login, development, um, run the worker locally. Okay, so it looks like it broke up a little bit here. So let's apply that first part um, and see where it gets us. Wrangler login, Wrangler dev. Okay, cool. So it caught most of this up to there. So let's accept that. Um, then try and apply this as well. Okay, cool. Yep, it looks like it just kind of continued on. Little bit of a little bit of jank there, but it's fine. And then there's a usage section. Um, so let's save that. And then again, a little bit of jank. Sometimes this happens with markdown files in particular. Um, so we're gonna apply that as well. Continue, not seeing where that went in. Okay, there we go. Maybe it was already in, really hard to tell. And uh, apply. This is just like, you know, kind of with the subdomain, et cetera. Um, now there's no license, so let's generate one. All right, yeah, so it, it actually tells us um, to do this. Um, let's create, let's create a new license file for Michael Chan, 2020, 2024, MIT. Perfect, let's create a new file, license, and apply. Continue. One thing I like to ask is, are we properly attributing open source dependencies? You're right to bring this up. Proper attribution of open source dependencies is an important aspect of open source, certainly. We have explicit, including library attribution, etc. So first, let's add the section to the readme. Um, great, I like it. Apply and accept. Now, are we using Webpack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, but uh, so then it says, please hit third party notice. So it's gonna add another file. It looks like, so third party notices.md, new file, third party notices.md. This is kind of out of my depth. I don't know if this is best practice um, or whatnot, but we're just gonna go with it because we're trusting the process. All right, I think we're good there. Now let's close all this up and just open the readme. Okay, so let's see how well uh, this thing documented things for us. Let's open up the terminal and start carving through these instructions. We're in this repo right now, so we don't need to do that. We do need to run npm install. Actually, we may need to de 
what is it, activate? Uh, it looks like we're, yeah, we're still in that Python environment, virtual environment. So uh, let's do this again, npm install. It says there's no matching versions for the YouTube caption scraper, which is interesting. Let's open our package JSON and see what they've tried to do for us. If we look at this, the latest version seems to be 1.0.0, and it looks like it was three years ago. So let's see what that's about. Now, I'm really not interested in in typing out any code. So we're gonna copy this and paste it directly into our chat. Now, when I open chat, this popped up and I don't know if it grabbed it from the terminal or from my clipboard. Uh, maybe we'll find out in a second. The listed version for this package doesn't exist. Okay, so it identifies exactly what we said and it says check the available versions, package JSON. Okay, I want it to do it though. Update the package JSON, so 1.1.0. Let's visit that. Let's go to npmjs.com and find that package. The latest versions. Oh, interesting. So this is the YouTube package scraper, but then there is a later version for YouTube captions scraper, which was updated one month ago. Let's see if this is a suitable alternative. Uh, this package has been updated more recently. Take a look at it and see if we could use it as a drop-in replacement or if we need to modify the code. Let me get, grab that URL and paste. And I'll use the whole application context at this point. See, so yeah, I reviewed the YouTube caption scraper package, which appears to be updated version of the caption scraper. Looks like it could be a drop-in replacement with minimal code changes. Here's what we need to do. Update the package JSON file. Yep, change line 10 to 2.0. It said 2.0 again, but the latest version is 2.03. Okay, again, we're just following it, trusting it. Update the import statement. Okay, apply to, nope, not on our package JSON. We want to do this in our index.ts. There we go, continue, accept. Uh, the get subtitles function signature remains the same, so no changes are needed there. Update the third party notices. Ah, uh, yes, I would have forgotten about that, so thank you. Uh, it keeps wanting to use the file that I have open in context. Uh, let's cancel that and apply again. It's funny, because it knows that it's this file, but it keeps trying to apply it to the wrong one. Um, apply. Yes, accept. Update the readme file. Readme, apply, continue. I'm gonna make that change, do we see it? Yes, accept. After these changes, run npm install to update the packages. Okay, so hopefully this should work now. npm install, and it looks like we're good to go. Now, I believe that I have Wrangler installed globally, yes. So Wrangler, who am I? Okay, it looks like I'm not authenticated, so let's follow those instructions and Wrangler login. Perfect, let's try that again. Wrangler, who am I? And it found us, perfect. Okay, so now that we're logged in, we can run Wrangler dev and we're getting an error. Processing Wrangler Tomal configuration. Uh, don't define both main and build upload main fields in your configuration. They serve, okay, we're getting this error in the terminal. And last time I jumped to the chat from the terminal, it kind of brought that context with me. So and I don't know if it was because I highlighted something or not. So we're gonna open chat up from here. Uh, and it has just the context of the last command that we wrote. So let's try this again. So I'm gonna just, copy this all and then bring it up. Okay, cool. So when I copy things into my clipboard, it will recognize that they're there. Let's run that error, see what happens. Remove the build upload main here and build upload dir, which don't doesn't seem to be defined. Keep only the main field to specify the worker's entry point. Your Wrangler Tomal file should look something like this after the change. That's a good point. I really didn't want to get into the editing code game. So we're just gonna apply and remove all that, except make sure the, to adjust the path in main field to point to the correct entry point of your worker. After making these changes, try running Cloudflare workers command. Again, the error should be resolved. Okay, now it's looking, it's so funny. It generated source, but this file is just in index.ts. So let's see what happens. We're gonna run that command again, Wrangler dev. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, error in main, module not found, error can't resolve source. Okay, so let's just grab this part of this error and run that again. What should I do here? 
And I accidentally hit command uh, enter, so it sends the whole code base, which is probably fine in this case, so it can see uh, what's, um, what's missing. So uh, create a source directory, new folder, source, and move the index.ts into it. Move, wonderful. Your project file should look like this. Um, project root, source, index.ts. Yes, I still don't know why there's apply for things like this that can't be applied, but so it goes. Uh, this change will align your project structure with the configuration. If you prefer to keep indexed TS, oh, it's nice that it provides this as an option. I was wondering if it was going to, and I appreciate that it, it, it does. Again, I wish that it provided it earlier. Um, I like those decision points earlier on, but so it goes. Choose the approach that best fits for your project structure. Okay, all right, so command K to generate a command. Oh, that's kind of cool. So command K, um, I'm not sure what that does exactly, so <laughs> rank by death. Okay, again, we have an error. What is this error telling us? Error, can't resolve source. Curious if I spelt it wrong. Uh, maybe I didn't save it. Maybe that's the problem. I needed to save it after moving it, possibly. Okay, so warning in configuration mode option has been set. Webpack will fall back to production for this value. Okay, that's fine with me. I'm still getting that same error. Now it's interesting because it's looking for source JS and source JSON, which is peculiar. So let's let's actually grab all of this. Maybe we need to give it more context. And let's send the whole code pace again. I'm so confused. <laughs> Unhelpful, but we're not able to just send error messages. So I have to write some nonsense here. So it says that Webpack is unable to find the entry point for a project. This is likely because the file structure doesn't match um, what's expected. Okay, thought we fixed that, but let's see. Uh, first make your index.ts file in the correct location. Yes, okay, let's verify. Source index.ts, yes, we got that. Uh, update your package JSON to specify the correct entry point. Um, close these, package.json. Build is using Webpack. Our entry point is main dist index.js. So supposedly that would be uh, what Webpack uses to know where to export the build. Uh, change this line, mains, oh, okay, so we want that to be source, I guess. Actually, again, okay, so let's apply this to our package JSON, continue, accept. Um, create a webpack config.js file in your project root, woof. Okay, so before we add more webpack config, is this necessary? I thought Cloudflare workers had native TS support. You're right, and I apologize for the confusion in the previous response, good Lord. This isn't looking great. It's not looking great. Uh, Cloudflare workers indeed have native TypeScript support, which means you don't need to use Webpack for compilation. Just fuck me. Uh, let's simplify your setup. Hooray! Remove Webpack related dependencies from your package JSON. Yay! Apply, accept. Update your Wrangler Toml. Yay! Apply, accept. Ensure your source index TX file exists and contains worker code. Yes, it does. Remove the webpack config JS, JS file. We never create in it. With these changes, you can now use Wrangler directly to deploy your worker without the need to for a separate build step. Thank you for totally sending me in the wrong ass direction. The TypeScript code will be compiled by Cloudflare's build system when you deploy. To deploy your worker, you can now run NPX Wrangler deploy. This approach leverages Cloudflare's native TypeScript support. Simplifying, I'm glad that I had to know this and not you. Hey, but can we run it locally? <laughs> can we run it locally? Wrangler dev. Hey, okay, so we have some form of success. Um, we're going to, what is, is that just left left bracket to open? Hmm, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so B to open a browser. Uh, please provide the URL as a URL query parameter. Okay, uh, no problem. So I grabbed the URL for our last. Um, so say question mark URL equals and paste that in. And hey, we got it. But we do have not a numbers, uh, which is not particularly helpful. So let's see if we can just paste all this, grab all that, and then uh, paste it in as um, an error. So the code works as a Cloudflare worker, but we have we have problems still. So running in dev mode, the output I'm getting is incorrect. The end time shows as NAN. 
I'll paste the code below. Let's paste in everything we've got. And um, let's add as context our index.ts file, which is where the error likely resides. Oh shoot, I sent everything. Thank you for providing the context. I understand the issue you're facing with the end time showing not a number on the SRT output. Let's take a look at the relevant parts. The problem is format time function and how it's being used. Here's the relevant part of the code. Apply um, entire file. Yeah, let's just apply the whole thing. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, that's what diffs are for. Oh, but we don't have a diff because I haven't committed anything yet. <laughs> uh, apply entire file. Yes, 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 yes. Go, 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 go. Accept. Okay, did it did it work? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, the key change is this line, end time format. So let's find this in the code. End time format entry time plus, um, oops, uh, plus entry duration. Okay, cool. Now you're correctly calculating the end time by adding the duration. So I imagine this is probably just a difference in the like APIs between the two libraries, but we never saw the other one working. So uh, hard to say, it could just be a, a, a bad a bad suggestion. Okay, so now I don't know um, exactly how Wrangler works. It looks like it's reloading the local server. So I should be able to um, open it in a browser again with B typing our query param URL equals, whoops, nope, I still have that in my pasteboard. So URL equals the YouTube URL. Still getting not a number. Good grief. Okay, let's uh, assume the best and exit out of this and run Wrangler dev again, just in case it didn't reload uh, properly for some reason. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Exactly how I'm feeling. Okay, so these are all my chats. Actually, I'm gonna use this opportunity to go back to a previous chat and say, okay, this is not fix the issue. Please reevaluate the approach to getting the correct timestamps. At this point, I'm feeling a lot more like a QA engineer slash PM than a coder. Let's, uh, while it's doing that, let's kind of look at our generation and see. So it does make sense that if we have an entry, we would use the start time plus the duration. However, I don't think it knows how to do that math. I apologize for the oversight. You're right, and I appreciate your patience. <laughs> You know, I, I learn a lot about how to uh, form goodwill with people based on uh, these little robots. Uh, let's take a closer look at the issue and propose a more robust solution. The problem likely stems from how YouTube API provides timestamp data. Let's modify our approach to ensure we get accurate timestamps. We'll make the following changes. This interface looks exactly the same to me. Start number to number text string. <laughs> it's just giving me the same code over and over again. Uh, just gaslighting the shit out of me. If you're still experiencing issues after these changes, it would be helpful to log the raw data received by get subtitles functions to understand the correct format. Okay, this will help us see the, okay. So it's giving us some debugging options. Right now, I'm gonna apply this whole file and see if it solves it. Apply the entire file. Yes, apply the entire file. Let's exit out of this to get a fresh build, just in case. B opens the browser URL, still nan nan nan. So let's follow its debugging advice. Okay, so let's apply this to our index.ts, continue, accept, and let's just try opening a browser. Okay, now did this, okay, it didn't log. Yeah. Try again, do I need to save it? Is that the problem? Is that what's going on? Okay, so now that we have some output here, let's uh, try utilizing that. It's a big boy. Interesting, so I have added chat and add the composer. I don't know what composer is yet. I've heard good things, don't know what it is yet. Okay, we're just gonna grab this and as much of it as we can reasonably get. And uh, yeah, we'll say add to chat. Um, this is a section of the output data. Does it help solve the problem? I think things slowed down because I may have hit some kind of uh, limit on my free account and I'm getting slow requests now. That assumption was incorrect. It's actually just slow. I still have many, many hundreds of uh, premium model requests. Okay, thank you for providing this sample of the output data. This is very helpful in understanding the structure. Oh, 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 strings, not numbers. Was that in our documentation? No, they're written as numbers. Very 
Very strange. Uh, curious. Okay, now this is getting interesting. Okay, so we applied all that. The key changes here, updating the transcript interface to use string types for a certain duration as they're provided as strings in the API response. And the, U okay, 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 okay. Uh, Boop, 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 boop. Great. Oh man, I really need diffs. Okay, so this should this should help. It says. Um, so let's exit out, run it again, um, and then this URL should still be good. So let's pull this up. Hey. Okay. Cool. And then they should match, right? So uh, zero seconds, frame thirty three to one second, frame five thirty two, or whatever this is. Uh, this couldn't possibly be frames milliseconds, maybe. Um, but then this matches this. And this matches this, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So with that, we should be able to close all this up and I wanna run one final request. So we're gonna send all of this up and ask one question, which is, okay, we have changed a lot of code. Take a look at this package and let me know if anything needs modification, removal, or needs to be added to get ignore. I'd like to have the package be as tidy as possible before deploying it. And we will submit the whole code base so far. Hey, thank you for, for providing update code snippets. I'll review the package JSON. Okay, so looks overall good, but there are a few suggestions. Type field module. Okay, we can apply that. Great, no file to apply to. Uh, <laughs> you literally said package JSON right there. Okay, uh, open package JSON and apply it there. Yes, continue. Did it get in the right spot? Yes, accept. Um, add a private field to prevent accidental publication. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, consider adding a license for sure. Let's do it. Uh, add a build script, Wrangler builds. Okay, accept. Here's the modified package JSON. Oh, I could have just applied all of it. Well, that's fine. Uh, now let's look at the git ignore. The current git ignore looks good, but you can add a few more entries. Uh, yes, so we want to get Wrangler out of there. Uh, it, it wasn't included here, so it technically doesn't actually look good, being uh, a little too positive about its own work here. Uh, these additions will help keep your repository clean, ignoring common development issues. Lastly, make sure that you have a TS config. Okay, so let's add a new file and apply that. Um, yes, right there, great, accept. Uh, with these changes, your package should be well organized and ready for deployment. Okay, now at this stage, I wanna make sure that nothing that we changed uh, screwed up our build. So let's run Wrangler dev again. Um, B to open in our browser, push mark URL, paste the URL, and we get our timestamps, great. Okay, so it looks good. Let's run our new Wrangler build scripts which does the build as we expected. Would you like to help improve Wrangler? Okay, let's uh, commit all this, add everything and uh, convert to TS for Cloudflare worker deployment. Okay, moment of truth, Wrangler deploy. Yes, yes, do we get it? Okay, published to this URL, open. <laughs> okay, add our URL. Oh, weird, bummer, error fetching transcript. Could not find captions for video. Um, let's make sure that URL is correct still. I thought it'd be fun to explore Cursor AI, something I have heard of. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out why that doesn't work when deployed to Cloudflare workers. Okay, so I've uh, deployed to Cloudflare workers and I'm getting an error that didn't appear in development. Is this a permissions problem? Uh, let's see, error below. The error message couldn't find the captions for video suggests the issue is not necessarily a permissions problem, but rather the captions or subtitles for the specific video couldn't be retrieved. This may be an issue with YouTube API, caption scraper library and production environment troubleshoot this issue you can try the following verify the id yes we've done that okay so it gives us some logging code possibilities check cloudflare worker to logs that's probably the best suggestion yet and then verify your environment variables if you're using any environment variables we don't have any environment variables make sure that you're correctly set in cloudflare working configuration test local production flags try running your worker locally with the production flags to see if you can reproduce the error oh that's interesting Let's, um, okay, so now it shows me run? Just been seeing apply all this time. And now finally we see a run command. Okay, so the URL is here and it works. 
So didn't have any problems with the production environment. Blech. No issues with the production flag. Number eight, can you do a quick search for me? I don't really want to know. That's what I'm asking you. No and the variables. Okay, so let's visit some logs here. So we want to uh, begin streaming for this Cloudflare worker and visit it in a new tab. URL equals, ah crap, I gotta get that URL again. Okay, the URL equals this. And now it works, good grief. Was it me? Did I do it wrong? Did I do it wrong? Here, wait, maybe it's because there were some URL parameters. Uh, additional URL parameters that YouTube likes to put on there. Nah, it just works now. I didn't redeploy, I didn't do anything. What the? All right, we're just gonna call it my fault. We're just gonna say it's my fault. <sighs> okay, so what did we learn here? Um, We learned that uh, it's, it's all kind of like pretty stupid still. I, I made the mistake of not being deliberate enough. And I think that that's probably the biggest thing to, um, to know is that it just doesn't seem to do a good job at wholesale changes. Like, hey, we wanna make this a TypeScript library. It's gonna just bring in a bunch of garbage that doesn't need to be in there. And so I think if I were to do this again, I would probably do it piece by piece and say, hey, now that we've decided that we want this to be a TypeScript file, let's make it a TypeScript file. Okay, cool, we've done that piece. Now let's figure out how to build it for the Cloudflare environment. And then as soon as I saw Webpack creep in, uh, say like, hey, I'm pretty sure that we g we can deploy TypeScript and like just kind of guide it along um, step by step. This whole like uh, convert it from Python to TypeScript uh, really didn't work. Now, ultimately we did end up with a URL on the internet that's able to do this and it took us longer than we wanted to, but it's there and it may have taken me longer to, you know, if I got sucked into the research of which library was gonna be best, if I had to discover all of these things with, you know, Python and the limitations there first, uh, it could have taken me significantly longer than that. Conversely, we did also end up though, dealing with just the frustrating parts and none of the fun parts of coding. So I guess maybe if my goal is like, just have something on the internet, then those trade-offs are worth it. Um, if my goal is to have fun making something on the internet, maybe those trade-offs aren't worth it. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. So I uh, hope you found this helpful or useful. Uh, again, subscribe, share, like, or don't. Fantastic. See ya. Bye.